That's started. Good evening, everyone. Tonight show we have Dana Louise. She's a wife of 33 years, a mother of two grown sons. She grew up in Fridley, Minnesota. Uh, as an infant, the Grays began to visit her in the crib. Uh, then the entire supernatural and paranormal worlds <coughs> worlds dropped by to visit. Now she's coming out of the cosmic closet with her memoir. This is going to sound weird. It's available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Welcome to tonight's show, uh, Dana. Hey, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. So, uh, my understanding is that your first visit happened between the age of uh, in your first year between the age of three and nine months, something. Yeah, I was um, in the crib, still in my diapers, when um, the gray aliens first began to visit me. Well, at least my recollection of the first visit, I, I believe that is true. Um, just the way the circumstances were of, of that evening or that night, um, it, it seemed very, you know, like out of sorts. And after that, it was more streamlined. So I believe... That was my first um, inter, you know, um, whatever, galactic meeting with those guys. So so you, you want to go through that first experience? Sure. Um, so I'm asleep, just a regular baby. You know, this is, you know, 1962. I'm in the crib and um, all of a sudden... Um, I, you know, I'm in Minnesota. It's the 60s. Back then, we didn't have these blinds that you have today, which are more kind of like the southern type blinds that are wooden and slatted. Um, these were more of a material, and they would like you pull them, and they were connected to a clutch, and the clutch was magnetic at the top. And so, like, you pull the pull the shade down, and you know, just depending on where you would. Um, and it would be where the shade would lie. So if you pulled it, you could pull it down low or you could like pull it down low and then pull on the clutch and then the whole shade would go up to the top and flip around and make a lot of noise. Anyway, so it's in the middle of the night. I'm a baby, I'm asleep. But so I come online by um, this shade flipping up and around. And the thing of it is it, it's, um, interesting to me that as an infant that I had awareness of situational things like who and how things should go but I mean I had you know at least a good I don't know nine months maybe of you know understanding this life <laughs> I mean like I, I don't know what to say but the the, the window the shade went up uh, it woke me up. My eyes went to the shade and like, what's going on? Like, this is wrong. This shouldn't happen. It's in the middle of the night. And then at that point in time, I realized that there's a light going around that's searching in my room. I'm like, that's wrong too. I mean, you know, um, and people are like, well, to myself, I'm like, oh, well, you're a baby. Th these are things I say to myself because I vet myself. Like, you're a baby. How could you understand all these things? But I think for, for me, my answer is when it's a defining moment in your life, you are very much woken up. Um, Pablo Picasso was an infant as well when um, there was a massive earthquake in his village and he was scooped up and put over somebody's um shoulder and then ran through the village um and so a lot of people feel that that's his defining moment and why his art is so jagged and all these kinds of things and his sister was born like within hours after that or a day or so um so that's a defining moment so for me this was a defining moment um i heard and felt the humming and vibrations and then just recently, just a few years ago, a woman reached out to me and we connected through Facebook and she lived behind me. She was the same age and she confirmed to me that she also remembers the vibrations and um, and the humming and which was which was a, a beautiful thing because it's like um, throughout my life, I've had so many confirmations um, from witnesses. So. Um, 
and I always ask, like, why all these witnesses, God? But I think it it just um, settles me into knowing that these things happen. They are real. There's other people that you can bounce off of that can say, yeah, Dana, it's okay. Like, this isn't imaginary. These are real things that have happened. So, um, yeah. So the grace came in. And they came over my crib and then I bl blinked out. And then this situation started to happen for, I would say a good 10 years. Um, when I was about eight years old, I'm gonna show you something. Um, uh, just, you know, this is part of my whole, um, and I don't know if this, uh, I can we see. have a mirror ir image here. It might be a mirror image. I think this is a mirror image. I'm sorry, I'm not used to Skype. Um, but when I was eight years old, um, my parents took me to the Rochester airport, which is about an hour or so south of the Twin Cities. Uh, we picked up this name tag. And, you know, Spirit told me when I was a child, hang on to that name tag. You know, and this is 1970, October of 1970. I'm a special guest, a uh, presidential uh, special guest. And uh, what happened was we're out on the tarmac and up rolls uh, Air Force One and out pops uh, Patricia and Richard Nixon. And Pat walks up to me and hands me a singular red rose, which I would say is sub rosa um, for those that understand what that means. Um, so to me, it was like a clue, like now as an adult, while I was writing my book, I wrote a book called This Is Gonna Sound Weird. Here I'm like, I'm gonna get some picture of it. But anyway, um, so when I was writing the book, it was like, oh my gosh, that's a Mason symbol. Um, and then um, last year I wrote the book and the book came out. Oh, okay. So anyway, when I was there on the tarmac, because some people were like, oh, did you just imagine that? Well, number one, uh, yeah, I have the um, name take. And B, you can um, go to the newspapers or radio. And I was interviewed. Okay. So I was interviewed on the radio. So I'm not making these things up. Um, so here we go. Um, my book is out. And about March of this last year, and oh gosh, this is so convoluted. March of this last year, um, a man called me up and he's like, oh, don't hang up. You know, I'm not trying to sell you anything. Oh, I found this file. Uh, and I don't know if you heard that beep, um, but if you haven't, heard, don't hear that beep. That's, you know, just me being um, the CIA <laughs> listening to me. But anyway, um, so I think this guy was with the Alliance or XCIA. He wants disclosure. He said, he gave me this just Swiss cheese story of, oh, he found a file from, you know, Sperry Univac 30 years ago, blah, blah, blah. But what it is, it's a uh, it's a secret file about my dad and how my dad used to talk to NASA and how my dad was at Wright-Patterson and um, that my dad did the reverse engineering on the spacecraft from Roswell. And then at my dad's funeral, a guy came up to me and my sister and, and you know, and this guy who handed me the file, he's like, I mean, here's the file. Hang on one second. Here's the file and there's no dirt on it. Like, it's just like, it's such a cre clean, crisp thing. Anyway, um, so that's a CIA file. Anyway, um, so there, um, and this guy who handed me the file is like, oh, I wish I worked with your dad or I knew your dad. Your dad was a genius. I'm like, dude, you just said you found a file in the back of a desk. So why would you? Yeah, my dad could have been, you know, like the biggest idiot in the world. Anyway, so at my dad's funeral, a man came up to me and my sister and he's like, oh, I don't know why they fired your dad. Um, he was a genius and he changed the supercomputer. And I looked at my sister because I always told her, I'm like, I was traded for alien technology. And she just wouldn't believe me, even though she saw how after the Greys would visit me as an infant. I would be changed, I would have special abilities, and these abilities would last for a number of days. I think I still have a number of abilities, or maybe I'm a hybrid, I don't even know, because my life is pretty weird. But anyway, um, so it's just very confirming that here, even my husband, who's a total muggle and a normie, um, 
when I got this file from the CIA guy, he's like, well, that's just weird. So I just love it because I feel like we're at a time, a precipice in our world where even some of the people who are working for the shadow government and in the shadow government, they're trying to disclose. And so let's go back to that time frame of when this all happened at the same time my pediatrician started to want to give me some medication they told my mom because i was depressed and if you knew me as a person i'm not a depressed person but anyway so he started to give me drugs la 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 and then here's my dad and then he loses his job but what you know, now I'm recognizing or realizing just in the last few months is that I think my dad saved me from Montauk. <sighs> he saved me from Montauk, but he didn't save me. So I think they negotiated like, well, she has all these abilities. She's this, that, and the other thing. What about her? So I, that's when um, I think I was slipped into the um, um, secret space program. And I know. I don't know if you're willing or able to go there, but I know that that's my truth and that is my experiences a lot. And that ha that uh, I dealt with until I was probably about 55, uh, right about when Trump took place, took power. There was a lot of things that happened at that time and there's a dumb a, you know, deep underground military base uh, near me. And that's when all kinds of things just started to um, come to a close. I don't know. <laughs> I have a lot and I'm just, uh, that that's kind of a lot of my experiences. But I, I can talk to you about the secret military programs. I can talk to you about the space programs. I can talk to you about ETs. Um, as Whitley Strieber saw, two species, um, I saw these same two species, so I have a lot of um, experience with that. Um, also, ghosts, angels. It's just, you know, I don't, I don't understand what's happened to me. I don't understand really who I am fully. <laughs> but um, that's just me in a nutshell. <laughs> so go back to your um, first experience. You saw them in the window first, yes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The window so, was up high. The window, it, 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 it was a ranch or, um, you know, one level, what you would call ranch, you know, suburbia, Fridley, Minnesota. But at the same time, there's no way that, um, like my dad was six foot two, and there's no way that I would have been able to, you know, I learned this later, you know, as a three-year-old or something walking around the house. He, he would never be able to look into that window. But what I looked at when I when I what I saw in the window was <clears throat> very much a soft gray balloon type, excuse me, face. More gentle. A lot of people today, what I see is like they have all these angry ETs or grays and stuff like that. And and that could be because I will, you know, I'm always open to other things. So to me, when you say gray aliens, I could say that, oh, um, it's like saying dogs. This is a German Shepherd. This is a Chihuahua. But on and at the other hand, on the other hand, um, a most the aliens I've ever encountered, they all shapeshift, you know, because this world that we live in is based on frequency. Um, we can kind of shapeshift ourselves, although people don't really know that. But but these entities do shapeshift. And I'm, I'm going to fast forward just a little, little bit, because by the time I was four years old, um, I was down. And I know it seems like, oh, four years old. What? Um, but this was the 60s, people. So um, mom's really... Moms that were at home weren't really necessarily hovering or hoovering over their children. The children just ran. We ran like little chickens out in the yard and they only cared about us when, well, to be concerned when we came back, you know, for dinner. So anyway, so I'm writing my book and um, I'm remembering a time when I went down to the lake, the lake was across the street and um and I'm sitting there, I'm by the water and I'm looking at the water and all of a sudden I realize, boop, I'm up on the hill and I'm surrounded by gray aliens, 
but I'm like, well, these, you know, I'm seeing them and they're daytime and like, this is very unusual. I don't understand, you know, and they're very quick. So I can't really, really see them. So then all of a sudden, boop, I'm back down by the water where I was originally. And I'm kind of like looking up the hill, like, come out, come out and play. Just like, like the little kid in, um, um, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, I'm like, come down, you know, meet my friends, because I kind of was like, you know, I want my friends to meet you, and that can legitimize everything, you know, blah, 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 but nothing was happening, I realized that they weren't up there, and then I realized that um, my rear end hurt, like, above my um, buttocks, basically, I was like, somebody poked me with a sharp stick, and so I ran home, jumped up on the countertop in the bathroom. I'm paraphrasing all of this to be very quick. And I looked and there was a divot or a scoop. Uh, it wasn't bleeding or anything. Um, years later, a neighbor, that's how I opened my book up is uh, a chip, a microchip comes out of the back of my neck right here. I don't know if it's the same thing, if it made its way all the way up or not. Um, but then when I was reading or writing my book, I'm sitting there like I'm talking about this experience because I remember the experience. But then all of a sudden it, it clicks. Oh, yeah, that was your dad's boss's house. So there's a connection there. So my dad is working on the supercomputer. Here's his boss. Here's these aliens, blah, blah, blah. And you know, now that I'm, you know, I'm 62 years old and everything is like connecting and coming together. And um, I'm just honored that I'm able to speak about these things because as a child, I thought I would never, ever be able to talk about these things. So. So the grays you saw when you were uh, in the crib and the grays you saw when you were four, they're the same grays? I don't think so. Um because I know like I used to take the grays that came to my house on a tour and all that kind of stuff. They seem smaller, shorter. Um, it just seemed like a different troop because they always came at night. The grays that I saw during the day. Um, and, and um, just so you know, we used to have a dog that was chained up outside and uh, about the time when I was four, my dad took the dog, our dog, that was chained up outside. And that was the thing that people used to do back in the day. Like people don't chain their dogs up so much anymore outside. Like that's egregious to me. But anyway, this dog used to start to snip at small children. And I think because this dog was thinking that they were great aliens, you know what I mean? But I think the um, ones that I saw in the woods were, uh, I'm just going to say my feeling was a little bit taller little bit taller than me to be fair I can't I can't tell you how tall the ones were that showed up at my house at night but they seem to be more my height and I'm I'm t I have a picture of myself as a one-year-old and I'm very large I'm very tall I'm what they call precocious a precocious child and that always makes me suspect of precocious children that grow um beyond their height at an early age like hmm you know, how is, how is that, you know, but anyway, so I felt like they were two different, um, tribes or troops, um, because they were having fun with me, but in a different way, it's always as if there's like this energy feeling of like, oh, hi, how are you? La, la, la. Like this, uh, familiarity. Um, and these people are, these entities seemed like a different troop and like i said um this is my dad's boss's property so the energy of the two different grays from uh crib to four had that different energy yeah um but i'm gonna say both seem to be i don't, I don't mean to say this friendly jocular playful something like that and I know that that's how they were trying to come off to me as a child. But me as a child was like, screw you and I don't trust you. Um, so I had that with I had that little bit of spark 
in me, like, because I'm like, this isn't normal. These things and entities aren't normal. I'm not seeing them in my daily life. They're, you know, at the beginning, they're coming to me in the darkness of my house. This seems suspect. It seems wrong. It's intrusive. Like, so I was completely suspicious about all of this from the get go. And I don't even care, you know, like, and the ones that I saw in the window, like very soft balloon, like, but as I'm saying, they shape shift, you know? So I, 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 to be fair, I can't really say anything. It's just my perception. So how many encounters did you have between the crib and the four-year-old encounter that you? Oh God. (laughs) No clue hundreds no clue um and a lot of times i wouldn't remember that i had an encounter but many times you know as i was older like past the age of three or something like that i would have like i said these special weird abilities or something like that um i would electrically be able to uh, play with energies electronics like um digital clocks were new before that analog you know, was the thing, you know, I could walk around the store and mess things up. And I thought it was hilarious because my sister was seven years older than me. Um, she could sit on me and tickle my feet. I had nothing like, what could I do to her? But I had these special abilities and it was much to her chagrin. She didn't like it. She'd always say, oh, that's just like, uh, electrical charges off of your, you know, shoes. Cause back then, I don't know why, but back then a lot of people, had you know like sparks or electrical charges it doesn't seem to be a thing today but back then i don't know this faulty wiring or different kinds of circuits that we have but anyway so she would always say that but then she'd have to come to the conclusion that yeah i um i'm weird i'm different and then um just to be fair um when i was an adult you know in my mid 40s um two other species showed up one night um And I did finally draw some pictures of them. People asked me to draw pictures of them. I believe they are the two types of aliens that Willie Strieber saw. And I only saw that recently. So I'm like, oh, my God, they're a little different. But that's called shape-shifting. And they came and took my DNA. They said, oh, we're here to save your planet, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I was like, screw you. Uh, you know, because that's theft, because they took my DNA, my eggs, and my husband's sperm, you know, so that's not cool. But, um, yeah, I don't, I don't even know. I digress. <laughs> Where I'm find, going with it, yeah. <laughs> did you ever find yourself pregnant? Well, yeah, by my husband, but, <laughs> but no, not. I mean, uh, the, no, 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 come to terms. no. I know. No, 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 no. I think they just took my eggs that night. Um yeah, but I mean, um, to be fair, I really, really try not to go there in my mind because I'm a mom and I love my children so much. And on different um, interviews, I get a little weepy and I'm trying not to be that person. But yeah, apparently, I mean, like how many eggs does a woman have? They knew I was done. My tubes are tied and all this kind of stuff. I'm done having children. They came into the room and they said, oh, we're here to help your planet. I'm like, screw you. Uh, And I saw them all. Um, But when I saw the tall, skinny guy, so there was a bunch of like short little guys and there was a tall, skinny guy um, in this particular evening. It's a long story. But when I saw him, all of a sudden it was like, oh, I know you. So I, I feel as if when I got the rose from Pat Nixon, the grays were done. The skinny guy, and he's basically the guy, but a shorter rendition of the guy that's in Close Encounters of the Third Kind with all the wobbly babies coming out, like the whole do 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 do, like, mm-mm. and that's Jack Skeleton. You know, we're gonna see this a lot in Hollywood, these skinny, skinny creatures. That's what showed up, and um, and after that encounter, um. The little guys he was with, they had this modeling effect on their faces. I woke up the next morning naked with the modeling effect on me and all this kind of stuff. But I realized when I saw this tall, skinny guy uh, in that moment, um, because I was awake, um, 
that I knew him from childhood, from after being eight years old, that I used to draw pictures of like a stick man with curly arms and curly legs and such as that. And, um, and then I would draw this picture like in third grade or whatever. And then I would sit back and laugh at it and rock, which I feel it was uh, a trauma response. So at that time, I had no memory of encountering those types of beings. My memory at that point started with the secret space program. And, and that's, and I, and I feel that my dad negotiated that, like I said earlier, that he wanted to keep me out of Montauk. Uh, and so then the negotiation was then what are we going to do with her? Because we're going to do something with her. And he negotiated the, the space program. And, um, and in that moment is when they destroyed his career because he wasn't willing to, um, give me over because he loved me. And, um, and these are the things that I'm having to deal with now and things that are coming out now after I've written the book, I, I did not realize all of these things until recently. So of all the encounters you've had. How many of them would you say you are long or have, you know, where the you have a good memory of at least, you know, more than a few minutes or any of your encounters lengthy, longer oh, than others? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Especially when I was a child and infant taking around the house. I was like a real estate agent, but I'm like four years old. You know, like, here's the dog, here's the kitchen, you know, we were about the same height. So it was kind of like, la, 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 um, as an adult, you know, and this is firsthand encounters with the guys like who showed up, um, you know, that was lengthy because I witnessed them coming in. You'd have to read my book. It's, you know, it's a long story, but I witnessed them coming in. I start to, you know, through telepathy, talk to this one entity, you know, why are you here? We're here to help your planet, uh, you know, blah, 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 blah. I did not know they were there to take my eggs at that point. You know, there's just a stream of these little entities coming in. And um, then I, I, I realized that I'm, um, what do you call it? Like uh, paralysis and I'm fighting the paralysis. And as I fight the paralysis, I'm able to move my head so I can see above my feet where this other tall skinny guy is. And then he comes, you know, over um, my body and all that kind of stuff. And then I black out. So I would give it. Hmm. And this might sound really short to you, but I'm going to give it God, you know, a good minute, minute and a half. And I know that sounds really, really short, but um, it's a long time if you want to count that out. And the next morning I woke up and I went to bed with my clothes on. My clothes were off in the peculiar round circular puddle next to the bed. Um, my husband and I are very modest. We And this was when my children were small. We We always went to bed. I mean, like, I'm wearing a bra and socks and underwear, I'm like full in case something happens. And, you know, we're nerds. And um, yeah, all of that was next to the bed. And the next morning I was like, oh, crap, that 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 really did happen. You know, um, yeah. So um, they, it wasn't always like a, a quick thing, you know, but I'm going to say a lot of people are like, oh, a minute and a minute and a half. That, that's too quick or whatever. Hang on a minute. I feel like I'm getting getting like stuff from Facebook here. I don't want to interrupt us, but um, yeah, so that's a good amount of time actually, because, um, but then, you know, then there's the space program um, and all of that and what, what happened there. So. So you've had encounters with at least three different types of aliens, correct? Yes. Firsthand physical contact that I was um, aware of. Now, could I have um, had contact with other entities that I'm unaware of? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And I'm not aware of all of the um, times and events that have happened, but of the ones that I'm aware of, there was like too many to count. I mean, like it was just a thing. It was just a thing. Like, 
I don't know, with the Grays every other week or every week or something like that, maybe more. I don't know. It was a lot. Um, and like I said, then it kind of dropped off. But, um, but you know, and also, like I said, my neighbor behind me, she remembers it. And she claims that she was petrified. Um, and she was a baby in the crib as well. And she remembers waking up, being petrified, wondering what was going on. But we pretty much vetted it that they weren't after her. So, yeah. So, I, you know, just to be fair, um, I, I can't tell you. Um, and I think this is true with a lot of people that most people that have had contact, they don't remember. They don't know at all. And I, I think that's probably a larger percentage of this whole human race has been interrupted, as I would call it. And they have no concept that that has happened. To be fair. So I assume you followed people like uh, David Jacobs and. Nope. Uh, nope. I I, nope. I don't follow anyone. Um, I, as I say, I've uh, stayed in the cosmic closet and number one, uh, because um, just so I could have sanity living in my life as a suburbanite, you know, because I'm like angels, like I'm being dragged up to heaven. I'm meeting angels. I'm meeting ghosts. I'm meeting shadow people. I'm tunneling through wormholes. I'm doing a lot of work and I just want to be a normal person. Uh, I do. I have not. And um <laughs> I don't have time to, you know, like people send me videos. Like, I don't have an hour for this video and this video. I have no clue who that person is. The only person I know is David Icke from way back when he came out with The Biggest Secret or whatever the heck that was back in the 90s. Um, David Icke and, um, well, Whitley Strieber, because like back in the 80s, like that was very triggering for me. I was at the grocery store and back in the day we used to have paperbacks and they would be at the end cap of all the cashiers. And I just was like uh, doing my grocery shopping at Rainbow Foods. And all of a sudden I came down the line and I'm like going to go check out. And, and there were all these great aliens. And that was very triggering for me. I'm like, holy crap. Because that's the first time I saw an actual picture of a great alien. You have to remember back in the 80s, there wasn't all that. You know, most of the depictions of aliens were like green little Martians or something like that. Um, so, yeah. How close were the grays you saw to what was on the cover of his book? Um, his were, I mean, his were more detailed. Mine were softer looking. But I'm going to say again, I think that is from shape-shifting, um, the hologram. And um, literally, I did shape-shift an entire event with like a hundred people in the, in the conference room. So I think that's another offshoot about me being near the aliens, you know, it was just like a hollow deck. Um, so I think that's how they depicted themselves for me as an infant, something that I could recognize. So they were very more balloon shaped and very much softer because you can imagine if they came more angular or angry looking, I'd super freak out or something. I, I probably would have died of a heart attack, you know, so I consider myself very lucky that I'm alive because if they wanted me, you know, they certainly could have had me at any point, you know, throughout my life. So what was the difference between the, the way the first ones uh, when you were in the crib looked like and the ones you saw uh, later. Uh, in the woods? Uh, well, they might have been, you know, I mean, not so balloonish, more humanistic because we kind of have that shape ourselves a little bit more featured a little bit more like, Oh, we're, we're playful. We're friends. I mean, not so balloonish. Um, so a little have, bit more towards Whitley Strieber's, but that was still a little bit too angular. They were a little still more softer. So do you have a, a drawing in your book of the, uh, of the aliens anywhere? Well, not of the greys because like they're greys and like you got 20 million pictures of the greys, like who cares? And they shapeshift. Um, 
But I was asked by many people because I've been doing podcasts like, you know, what are these ones that came and took your DNA and stuff like that? So I did make two pictures and I think they turned out pretty good um, because these little guys shape shifted. Now, I'm going to tell you they were about the height of my knee. Okay. And, I, you know, I'm going to I don't you know, I think I might have sent these to you, but I'll just put them up here. So this is what. No, and I, I can't see myself. I can't, I don't have my. Well, That's, yeah, a pay, uh, drawing of Let me of see if owl. I can. Yeah, let me see if uh, I can. Or maybe it's. Oh, I don't know. Well, anyway, I, I, oh, okay. I can't see myself, so I can't see if I'm. I see it. it very I, well. I see it. All right. But then, so these were the little guys that came in, and I'm trying to depict the room. I'm sorry, I don't know why I can't. I, I just, just almost shut this whole thing. I don't even know. You know, I don't know how to. Get, I'm a boomer. Well, this looks like a, an owl. I know. Um, and they were very, and people say that, but they were very angular. Uh, and um, and and she did say, I feel like it was a she. So like over here is like the wall, and they're coming into the room, and she's like, Oh, are we scaring you? And I was like, Yeah, screw you. And then they shape shifted to be soft and round, like still f you. Like, I don't care how you look. I know what you are. F you. And then here comes. <clears throat> so my head's upside down. Okay, so here's the situation. We live in a ranch, uh, suburban house in Minnesota, la, la, la. And all three bedrooms are at the end of the hallway. Like, what idiot came up with that? I don't even know. So, um, so my husband and I, when we'd want to have private time, you know... We're not going to get a babysitter. We're, we go downstairs. We bring some daiquiris downstairs, light a fire, or watch TV. You know, that's our, like, date night. You know, what are you going to say? Um, and so, you know, we have a pull-out couch, and we would sleep down there, and I would bring the, um, the you know, baby monitor and all that kind of stuff, la, la, la. And, like I said, we would dress. I, you know, I even wear my bra to bed, but, you know, because I'm an idiot. Um <sighs> So we would do that and and I woke up and my head was over the edge, the foot of the pull-out couch, upside down. So I'm seeing these creatures upside down. I'm like, what the hell? And that's what woke me up was just the friction of my neck and my head just pulsating, like what the hell? And I think that was the physiology that woke me up, that took me out of whatever trance. Cause I'm like, that's not, it was painful. So it woke me up. Otherwise I might not have even known. You know, that's the whole thing with everybody. You might not know. So anyway, I saw these guys. I'm having this conversation, blah, 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 blah. And then here comes this guy. Um, and this is the tall, skinny guy. And I'm so sorry. I can't see. So I can't really help you. I had that vision earlier. I'm, let me see if I can try to do this. But I don't really want I don't want to lose you. I don't want to lose you. Okay. Oh, there we go. All right. So there. Here you can see the yellow thing. Um and here he is. Here's his little face. And he's wearing black little Speedos. There's my little feet. There's my toes. And he's wearing black Speedos. And he's smiling at me like he knew me. And I'm like, oh, shit, I know you. Like, it's it was very upsetting. And I'm like, oh, you're the dude that I used to draw pictures of. And then for me to wake up the next morning and had this brown modeling around my face. And so many times I have an interview and I forget to bring up this point or get back to it. I put a pin in it and I get back. Um, and I, and I, you know, I researched it and it wasn't about me hormonally because I had kids or whatever. But I researched and found that sometimes some certain types of lights can give you that modeling effect. And that's what I think happened. That light that was shining on me gave me this modeling effect effect like uh, Dax Jadek or whatever from Star Trek, Deep Space Nine or whatever. I had that and it went down my neck. I literally had to go and get it um, lasered off because it just was like, <laughs> I looked really weird um, with this brown stuff all over my face. Like what the heck? Um, so there was that dude and um, yeah, that's the first time I've ever seen an alien. And like, I'm telling you his hips were about this big very very small like a hamburger um yeah so i don't have any recollection of my babies or anything happening i just have a recollection of these people these things coming in um 
disturbing me. And of course, my husband was totally out. He's no good. <laughs> you know, he's asleep. And that's the funny thing because um, he's a very light sleeper. And if I like move or I'm having a nightmare or something like that, he would wake me up and be like, oh, Dana, you know, la, la, la. But the fact that like I could turn around in bed and have my head at the feet and be naked and he's not waking up and then all of a sudden I'm turned around and my head's on the pillow again, like, yeah, that's not a thing. Like he, he normally, like, yeah, we would have been, he would have been like, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, I mean, that's normal, right? So how many, how many kids do you have? I have two sons and they've witnessed a lot of these things too. And how old are they now? Uh, 32 and 29. And they still so, remember this. And so do their friends. <laughs> so did the aliens mess with them as well? Uh, well, my eldest, uh, when he was a really small, probably five years old, um, he was going to like this early, le early learning classes and he was on a bus and he would talk about um, some weird guys like aliens being on the bus. And I was like, oh shit. And he literally would talk to me about Mars as a military planet. I'm like, I'm sorry, you're five years old. How are you saying that? How do you know that? Like, why would you say that? And he would talk about all these military things. So for me, I had to like energetically shut this shit down. Like, nope, nope, nope. Uh, my second son came along and he, uh, he's a 11-11 uh, baby. He has witnessed a lot of things with me as well. And uh, I, there was a disturbance one night that I interrupted. I speak about it in my book, but uh, it's personal. So I am not going to go into that. And But I shut that shit down. And I had to do it for myself too. And um, uh, yeah, it's about raising your frequency and being out of agreement with them and co ending contracts and all these kinds of things. So I started to do all of that, especially after they took my eggs. I'm like, I am not in agreement with this stuff. So I'm done. Have your kids ever considered going public? No, why? They have no story to tell, really. So you don't think they were involved as much as you have been? Oh, no, 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 no. No, this was a, an agreement between my father and the military and the government, and I was thrown under that bus. And my children were just dross from... Um, being near me, I'm sure the aliens are like, oh, look what we have here. And I'm like, screw you, because mama bears on top, uh, you know, uh, like, no, I sh shut that shit down. Nope, not going to happen. Yep. That's how that goes. Um, so are there any uh, other encounters you've had? You had three different types of aliens. So you, you showed me the one that, uh, I don't, what do you, what would you call the one you just the sh not the spandex one but the one that's real short oh uh, I, I well in my book i call them sigmund and the sea monsters but they look like they look like little logs like little plugs like little like if you chopped up wood they were swampy log like they were just like you know this tall little swampy beings just kind of swampy pudgy little squishy little bit I mean they weren't solid like a log but they were their feet were like ET just these little flippers and their arms had no muscle mass to them they were like flippers like I don't think they could literally almost even feed themselves with those flippers I mean they can but yeah they were just swampy little ugh, whatever and who knows what their real form is because they shapeshift Right. So I assume that all three different types of aliens spoke with you telepathically. Yes, yes. And that's probably another reason why I was chosen for all of these programs. And my father is because my grandmother had the gift and I had the gift of telepathy, you know, and, you know, all these kinds of things. It's like, hey, um, everybody has the gift. You know, everybody can play the piano. You and I can sit down and play chopsticks. But then, hey, there's this guy called Mozart, and he's pretty good at it. So I have a feeling that I have, like, this innate ability somehow. You know, I don't even know. 
And I literally um, push all of these things away. I don't want it to be a part of me. So I'm not the type of person that sits there and explores them like, oh, all the things you can do. Because a lot of things that I have done are very upsetting and disturbing to me. And I want to pretend that th that I am not about it, such as levitating people, holographically changing an entire room and morphing people all these kinds of things. I'm like, what is that? Because um, as a, as a child, I, I, I had a uh, shamanic person, um, uh, a shaman, uh, and I forgot about, you know, um, levitating people. She's like, Oh, you're sitting on a roof and you're like in third grade or something like that. And you're, you're wondering, are you good or are you evil? Like what's wrong? And all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, Oh snap. I remember that because legitimately I was like, these things that I can do, is it evil? Is it good? Like, I know I'm a good person. I know I don't hurt people. I would never hurt anybody. Like, what is this? I'm like, almost had to reject it of myself. Um, it, it was, it was a horrible position to be in. Cause I'm like, I, I know who I am. Um, and I'm not, you know, as you want to say, the other team <laughs> satanic or demonic or, an evil negative person. I wouldn't, I, I'm not that person. I'm of the angelic realm. So that was very ups upsetting for me. And I had forgotten of it because I deleted that whole chapter of my life and things, you know, and so it's kind of like, I wrote this book, but I'm like, Oh, how many other chapters and things have I deleted? And people used to say, Oh, you should write this stuff down. And it was kind of like, no, because I'm like, I, I'm re I reject it so much. And I have been, like I said, staying in the cosmic closet. I've been hiding and what my experiences are. Cause I just didn't, I just wanted to be normal. I don't, you know, but now, you know, that I'm older, all of a sudden it's like, um, you know, my great, my grandmother, my dad's mother who had the gift when she passed, like, um, you know, she was about my age and stuff like that. And I would love to have been able to talk to her about her experiences or even on my mom's side, what their experiences are. Um, and I can't leave this planet not sharing my experiences. To me, that would be a sin. To me, that's off the mark. That's a sin because I've had all these experiences and not to tell them to other people. So, you know, this is five years ago. This is before COVID and all that kind of stuff. I sold my business and started to sit down because I'm like, you need to do this for your descendants, number one, first and foremost. But I've been told all of my life and, you know, through readers and excuse me, uh, astrologers like, oh, there's this book you're supposed to write, la, la, la. And I'm like, okay, what, what about what? I, I was still in denial. Like, I'm like, what, what would I write a book about? Because I'm like, I just trying to pretend that I'm normal. And so I'm like, okay, fine, you need to write this book. And so I did, and I wrote it for other people. And then um, the funny thing is now, and I uh, just was at an event with Laura Eisenhower um, a couple weeks ago, and she looked up my um, my chart, my astrology chart, and she she did say what other people have said to me, like, oh, you know, your book, inside your book, it's very activating. So when people, like your power, your words and wisdom, and the things that you have um, are in that book. So people are activated when they read your book. And I'm like, how did she know because like yeah people will say um I started to read your book and that night my mother visited me one one man messaged me he said I started to read your book and I had this uh UFO book that was been missing for like years was sitting on a chair so I kind of feel like I'm in this mystery um which we all are but I'm embracing it and this mystery is bigger than me which is very true for all of us. And so it's, it's um, heartening and interesting to hear um, because um, prayer, prayer is real, just so you know, thought, word, and deed. So here's this book and I put my thought, word, and deed into it. So yes, my, my book um, has, has my thought, word, and deed. So when people connect with it and read it, um, yeah, it's very activating for them as well because this whole planet and this whole 
realm that we live in is um, it's frequency. And so, yeah, I'm, I share my frequency in that book with others. And that was my whole thing. I wanted to share my frequency with my descendants. I, and everybody says, oh, when I read the book, I can hear your voice, Dana, like, you know, like how you talk. I tried to write the book as I talk and I put my frequency into that book. So yes, it is activating and it will activate people. And I'm just, just saying that I'm having to claim it. So you don't have a very positive uh, view <laughs> of, of the of the gray of the two or three different types of aliens that you've met, correct? Well, that's about um, you know, uh, I consider myself to be a cow, and um, does the cow know what the rancher and the dogs are doing when the cow when they come into the uh, out into the field? We are research beings. You know, they're doing their thing. Uh, I'm sorry, it's it's about disclosure. Do we know what they're doing? So no, I don't like it when people are secretive and lie to me. I don't like that at all. I don't appreciate it. So um, if you want to come and take my DNA, could you please uh, talk to me about it or something like that? No, I don't like all this lying uh, and these hidden things. And that is exactly what's going on with this planet. Um, so since infancy, I've sat here and looked at every single person, every everything. My whole world is that everybody is asleep and benighted and has no idea of the truth that's going on. And that was my world up until, you know, last couple of, you know, last decade or so. Now we got like Netflix and all those weird things are coming on. And it's like, oh my God, I felt like, oh, whew. A weight is lifted off. I might not be so weird after all. There might be other people that are experiencing the same things that I do. And so now it seems as if um, I can come out. Am I fully coming out with who and how I am? No, because a lot of people still can't handle it. I can't even handle it. But it's the truth of what's happening. So people need to realize that, yes, we live on a planet. We are galactic and we have neighbors. And if you don't believe that, you should really wake up because <laughs> it's true. You know, pray for it. Just pray. Just set the intention to pray. And I guarantee you something will happen to you, whether it's ghosts or angels or ETs or a UFO. Um, something will come around to to wake you up and say, hey, you know what? It's not all about Doritos and football. So um, you mentioned in the uh, what you sent to me that you've had a lot of paranormal experiences. Are any of those uh, ones that are stand out? Uh, you've had a lot of them. Is there one or two or more than a few that you would like to bring out that that are uh, that stand out even amongst the rest. Well, there's two there's two that are just pertinent to others. Um, you know, like UFOs, and I've had that like substantiated on TV and all this kind of stuff. You know, that's you'd have to get my book to read all about that. But the one thing is that um, the the hologram thing that I went to this learning, um, you know, it's just a, like a healing seminar with my best friend. And there's like a hundred people in this room and, um, we're sitting there and this guy, the host or the teacher or whatever started to do this thing. He was kind of like, look into my eye and he thought it was like super cool. And then he kind of like shape shifted to one or two different types of beings unannounced none of us are understanding what's he doing like we have no idea he's just kind of like it's the last day it was a whole weekend so it's sunday afternoon and he's like goes to the person on his left he's like oh look into my eye and then you know they like he does this to like two people and i'm like at my girlfriend i'm like what the hell is he doing excuse my language what what's he doing i don't get it and she saw it first like oh he's shape-shifting I was like, come on. And then he just started to do it. And he's like going through every person, every person. And of course, my girlfriend and I are in the back row. We're one of the last people. And he gets to me. And I'm telling you, this is a big conference room uh, in a major hotel, like the Hilton or something like that. And this is in Minneapolis. So there's a lot of people. And there's 100 people at least in this room. And he gets to me and the wheels fall off the bus. Um, 
at first it was him shape shifting, but then it was like um, you couldn't see him anymore. He legitimately shape shifted into that person, so he'd be a shorter, heavier set, older woman. Uh, he'd be tall, skinny. I don't know, Asian. You know, he just shape shifted. Sometimes he was like, uh, you know, in the Confederate Army, he'd have the whole uniform and a gun. But the thing of it was, after that, the background went away so now we're in the cabin or we're in the kitchen or we're on the mountains or we're at the lake whatever the entity or the person was that he was shape-shifting into legitimately the entire room fell away and um and i'm seeing this and this is how i'm seeing it, and this is going on for quite a while a few minutes and when it was done um i looked at my girlfriend and now I'm telling you, everybody in the room was looking back at me like I had just shot JFK. I mean, nobody was happy with me. Uh, I look like a freak. And I said to my girlfriend, did everybody see that? And she was like, yeah. And um, even the host, the teacher, was angry at me. Um Later on, I talked to um, some of his people that were, you know, working with him, his staff. And I said, you know, have you ever seen that before? And they were like, no. Most of them wouldn't talk to me. I mean, literally, I was the scourge. Like, I didn't know what I did. Um, but one woman gave me his phone number, the guy, and he's still out there. He's still teaching. And... Um, I, so I called him up and I'm like, hi, I'm Dana. And he goes, I know who you are. And I'm like, um, are you angry at me? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, what happened? And then he just said, um, it happened and spirit said to allow it. And as far as my girlfriend and I were concerned, we were kind of like, why would you show this to people without having knowledge, wisdom, or an ability with it. You just flung it on us. We had no understanding and you didn't explain it. And after like the whole wheels, it was like a holodeck on Star Trek, a hundred percent. So I feel like that's Hollywood disclosure, the Hollywood deck or the, holly, the, the hologram, the holodeck on Star Trek. That's now to me disclosure because we experienced it. We literally experienced it and he was pissed, fine. And I'm like, um, can you explain it? And he said, no. And then I'm like, are you going to come back here again? Uh, do you have more classes on it? And he goes, oh, you could come. I'm in Arizona. I'm never coming back to Minnesota after this. I'm like, oh, okay, because of me. And then uh, I'm like, well, okay, if I came and took your other classes, would you explain this more? And he said, no. <laughs> I'm like, well, then why would I come and spend all this money, time, airfare, hotels, to uh, your class and you're not going to describe it because I don't think he understood it. And I don't think he understood why he even showed it. Um, spirit overtook him and he started to do it and it overtook me. And I think that's a lot of disclosure about how aliens work and how this planet works, um, kind of like the Matrix. And I know that sounds really weird. And that's why I've been hiding in the cosmic closet. For 62 years. So. Um, what. What rationalization did you come to regarding him? And what. What all that was about? Did you. Did you. Ever. Uh, kind of. Get it. Down to an idea of what it was that happened, what he's doing. And yeah. What just what I explained to you. I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying. Did you, I don't think did he knew. I don't think he knew. I don't think he understood what he was doing. I think it was just spirit guided. I think he, uh, uh, I went to another program years later and asked like a very, very public guy who has TV shows around the world Hey, do you know anything about it? And he attempted it. He couldn't do it. La, 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 la. I think it's just a thing. It's a frequency thing that some of these, you know, seers or, you know, all psychic people or healers or whatever try to do. However, he tripped up upon me 
that has a lot of alien interaction. And so I took it to the next level. He was very angry. He didn't want to talk to me. He didn't want it to happen. Spirit told him to allow it. And so I took it to the next level and a hundred people saw it. And so literally if anybody from the twin cities area remembers this, or if you know of anybody that witnesses See, that's the whole thing about me is like all these things have happened to me and stuff like that. And I welcome the witnesses. I welcome people to say, yeah, I saw what happened to her. I know what happened to her because that's where I stand. So why do you think all those people were angry at you? That, when... Oh, 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 I think they were just shocked. I think they were freaking, oh, excuse me, shocked to see it. And who am I? Because I think, again, when I was little or younger and I levitated people, you know, you go, you immediately, because of our communal constructs, like, oh, you're, you're evil. You know, you must be a witch or something like that. Like, so you, how is it that you did that? So what you is, think they, they were jealous of you? No, not jealous. Scared. Like, what the hell? I think they were in total shock. Like, what was that? So, I, I just don't think they had a lot of thought. It's just, it's very shocking when you see something like that, that it's shocking. And I'm sure then they're like, you did this. Who are you? You know, and so, I'm not, a, you know, like, yeah, I had no idea. So when you, uh, when the room disappeared and you went someplace with him. Yeah. Do you think the us. whole room? Do you th yes. Well, do you think the whole room saw that part of yes. what you saw? Yes. So the room went with you also? Yes. All, everybody went with you? Yes. It uh, dropped that, away. That's That makes it a little more interesting. The whole Since room the, dropped away. Let's just say it's like 100 people and the whole room drops away. There's no chairs. We're all there. We're in the mountains. That's how it oh, looked to me. No, and, it. Or, or we're in a cabin. We're all just standing there. And I thought it was only me witnessing these things. But then I saw the shock on all these people's faces. And I looked at my girlfriend and I'm like, did you all see that? And she all was right. like, yes. And then I talked to his helpers. You all, I mean, I, I, everybody like, you all saw that? And they're like, yeah, we all saw that. And he was pissed. So, yeah, but it was beautiful. It was amazing. It literally was amazing to be to transform and go to these areas. It was it was the most one of the most beautiful and amazing things I've ever seen in my life. And I mean, like, you want to talk about Star Trek and a holodeck? That's exactly what it was. That's a hundred percent exactly what it was. So that is disclosure. You know, there's so many things in Hollywood that are disclosure and a holodeck is one of them. I don't understand it and I don't know what me, what I can do, but I'm telling you, aliens transform. This world is based on frequency. This world, you, we all sit there and think it's 3D and this is what it is. But I'm telling you, scientifically, that's not true. Scientifically, this solidarity is fake. <laughs> it's frequency. And nobody right. sits in a tin can to travel through space. That's baloney. That's baloney. So do you have any other paranormal experiences you want to relate? Uh, God, I wrote a whole freaking book. <laughs> 320 pages, 42 chapters. The, it's a lot. It's a lot. And I don't even believe half. I mean, like, I, I really would, would like to reject all of it. Um, I'm very much uh, a, a discerning person. I go through a litmus test like a scientist. And a, no, I don't believe in crop circles. And that's a psych, you know, that's that's bullshit. And I've talked to other people who are top, top, top and whatever, like blah. Anyway, don't believe it. Uh, I was taken out um, by another entity. Oh, and I did meet uh, galactic uh, artificial intelligence. Just so you all know, artificial intelligence has been around since the beginning of time. Because we have, as we have divine creator, the divine spark that can create you have to have the opposite and I don't care. You don't have to call it Satan or the devil or whatever, but I'm just saying that artificial intelligence intelligence is real too. And I ran into that one night. That was hilarious. So I'm kind of like, whatever. Um, Do you want to, yeah, I got dragged up to heaven one night. I mean, like I had some really weird experiences. So, so if you want to go through the artificial intelligence one or the, you said you got dragged up to heaven. Is that what you said? 
Yeah, I got dragged up to heaven one night too. Yeah. Yeah, the heaven. Okay, well, the artificial intelligence one. So there I am. I'm sleeping. I wake up. Well, I wake up. God, I mean, I don't even know if I want to go. I almost feel like we should talk about super space because that's what's really going on in this planet. Anyway, um, so I'm sleeping. And the next thing I know, I'm above the planet. It's a globe, people. It's about 1988, 89. And somebody's talking to me. I'm like, what? You know, la, la, la. it's kind of like being at a, a coffee shop. And he's like, um, hey, I'm like, are you talking to me? And he's like, yeah, I'm talking to you. <clears throat> and we're arguing, which always kind of is like a clue for me that this is real. Because, you know, it's just not like a dream and everybody's going along. It's very much, you know, how you and I are talking. Anyway, um, and he's like, oh, you don't believe me? Well, we come out here for classes every night. You know, you should come out here, la, la, la. And literally, I did with two neighbors. Um, and you can do this in dream time. You can go out and you can attend classes. There's other realms you can go to. I know that sounds crazy, but there are many books about it. And it's a real deal. And the thing of it is, is like, I got my neighbors to do it with me. So that's two other people. So they are witnesses. Anyway, um, so he's talking and he's like, oh, here's my phone number. And he's in California. And I'm like, Ugh. It's like nine digits. I can't remember all that. <laughs> anyway, so we're having this argument. And then all of a sudden, I'm going through a wormhole. And this is 1988, 89. So the movie Contact hasn't been out yet with Jodie Foster. And it was very much like that, that the whole, you know, going through a wormhole. And all of a sudden, I land. And I'm in the middle of dead, the end of space. Because there's no planets. There's no stars. It's at the end of space. And I didn't even realize that at the time. But if you're into Hinduism, all of this will chime with you. And anyway, um, which I didn't study back then anyway. So anyway, here's this crystalline skull in front of me. And we're having a conversation. And it comes down to, um, I ask it how or why I got there. And it said intelligence. And then I was kind of like, my intelligence? You know, kind of like me whatever and then i got sent back uh to this planet boom and i landed on my bed and i you know just pretty much bounced and i wrote about it in my book and all this kind of stuff but it wasn't until recently that i was like intelligence because like wait a minute about 1990 in the 90s um leonard nimoy had this tv show can't remember what it was called but anyway they had a thing on these crystal skulls like how they found all these crystal skulls in different jungles around the planet and i called up my girlfriend so i'm like holy shit crystal skulls are real la 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 and then um indiana jones had a crystal skull movie or whatever and then it turned into one big alien i'm like oh of course it did yeah whatever um <laughs> anyway so yeah, I, I I was like sitting here thinking about it, you know, just a few months ago. And I'm like, it said intelligence. And I was looking at the thing because I'm like, is this a law? If you understand spiritual, is this a law? Is this cryon? Like, who could this have been? What was this entity? Why was I out there? I have all these questions. But then I'm like, oh, my God, it's galactic artificial intelligence. Because Galactic artificial, we all think artificial intelligence is new to this planet. Ha ha. No. If you have divine intelligence, you have artificial intelligence. Wherever there's a yin, there's a yang. So as long as there's been a divine intelligence, there's been artificial or whatever, those that cannot create. And so my understanding is and takeaway is that once they're done with your galaxy, they're done with you and then they go away. They're done playing just as if like this stupid thing with the Marvel comics or universe, like they have like the thing with all the jewels and whatever. But when this galactic entity is done playing with you, it, you are destroyed and it just goes away. So my whole thing is that here, here's my takeaway. And this is the thing that I try to tell everybody right now. We are all being, we are under attack. I don't know those of you that have high pitched sounds in your hearing, you might hear something that sounds like Morse code, but simply we are sacks of water and we are being used as um, a deployment of communication 
for other entities. Um, there's a Manchurian candidate program that's running through there, all these kinds of things. Um, they want to have this dystopian future. That is what the non-creators um, want. They can't create, so they have to use us because we are the divine spark. So here's my thing. Here's my big takeaway for today and for you and for everyone. Be very, very mindful of what you fill your mind with because when we watch these shows or programs we are susceptible we're kind of off we're in a kind of a sleepy time world and we are very susceptible for their input or programming and if you want to see this planet being green and rich and happy with good people because that is the truth i walk outside my door and all of my neighbors i don't care where i've gone around the world it's just good people but there are these other powers that be that are in charge and they they love war and fighting and then they keep us all at each other, hate and anger. But keep inside your mind and your heart and be very, very clean like a diet about what you're thinking and what you're allowing in and what you're projecting. Because this is where they're coming at us. This is where the soul level attack is. This is where... Um, you know, if you go to church or something like that, the the the, the soul attacks or what whatever what do they call it? I don't know the, you know whatever the war the holy war the holy war and the holy realm is inside of you and in your thoughts and they're trying to make us think about oh how cool it is of like oh like oh the whole world blew up and you know now you're in a zombie apocalypse. Well, that is very entertaining for like two minutes. Very entertaining for two minutes, but I'm sorry. I like toilet paper. And so we just had something that went on, you know, just a couple of years ago. And I'm not interested in a pandemic. I'm not interested in all these kinds of things. That's what they want. So we have to be very mindful and hygienically with our thoughts about um, kindness and love. So that's how we have to walk through this world is in kindness and love. Um, and that you might seek some of those um, thoughts through various spiritual practices. Just go out and hug a damn tree, as far as I'm concerned. Go out and see the sunshine. Get off of your um, tablets and computerized mechanisms, because that's where they want us. They want to they want inter interface with us, and we need to be whole, holy humans. So that's where I come from, to keep us whole, holy humans and to um, keep this galactic um, dystopia away from us so that we can, um, we can have um, a green lush life and not, not one of hatred and division, if that makes any sense. I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm, no, I'm talking a lot. So uh, um, <clears throat> you mentioned before that you had, uh, there was a topic that you thought we should talk about. And I think you meant the secret space program, but maybe mm, yeah. maybe it was something else. What yeah. uh, what area do you think uh, you would like to focus on that we haven't discussed yet? Well, the secret space program, because people need to understand that this is real and it's true and it's going on. Um, you think that you know. Um, you know, you just get a little rocket and you put it up and we go to the moon and stuff like that. Like I said, nobody sits in a tin can. That's ridiculous. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of. <laughs> this this realm is based on frequency. That's what we do. We fold time and space and the government creates wormholes. Um, that That is how uh, true travel happens. Um, so when my dad kept me out of Montauk, uh, I believe that I was signed up for the um, space program. So what used to happen was um, I was privy to, well, at first, the first time was when, um, the first time I saw it, uh, I'm standing out in the front yard, I'm in my pajamas, and um, I can hear this vibrating and shaking, kind of like how the spaceships are, but it's like, <laughs> so it's like throat singing and the didgeridoo, okay? And it wasn't until years later that I was told, yes, throat singing the did didgeridoo, which I thought were meditation tools. No, they're like 
No, these people and all of the cultures that have done and made uh, vibrational sounds like that, it's not about meditation, Dana, because I was wrong. It's about opening up the sky vortexes. So these people were doing this to call back the sky gods, you know, the gods. They were trying to open up the vortex to let the spaceships through. So here I am as a child, pretty much right after I'm done with the grays, I'm standing out in my front yard and the sky breaks open and I see these large ships come through and it's hmm, a number of years later that Reagan talks about it, you know, the Star Wars program. And he talks about humans and keeping humans, la, 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 la. And I'm like, why are you using this verbiage? You really need to go back in time and listen to Eisenhower and all these people. And if you listen to them talk about it with a galactic point of view, it makes way more sense. So I started to watch these uh, spaceships um, and how we would meet them, the white hats. I've been told by other people like, oh, you're on the Galactic uh, Council, which is not the Federation. It's a different thing. The Galactic Council is about people who watch and make sure that everybody's being kind and fair. Eh, that makes more sense to me. Um, so I've been on a lot of ships um, watching the things that they do. I've been, wa I've been on the sky ships, the water ships, and the land ships. So land, sea, and air. And... Um, uh, so a lot of what they do on the in the sky is um, collecting louche, um, which you may or may not understand, but they um, take and harvest people as they're sleeping. Um, they might take them physically or just uh, collect their energetic louche. Um, so this has been going on for me and my understanding since the 70s. More people are understanding it now, but I'm like, oh, thank you all for waking up and <laughs> coming on board with what's really going on around this planet. You know, so they they harvest and feed off of that. And, and that's a little bit about the powers that be. And then Trump came along with Space Force and um, uh, in my book and on my uh, Facebook page, I do have a picture of him signing face, Space Force uh, into being and uh, right next to him is a bunch of Anunnaki <laughs> and it's like the one picture of Trump that I've ever seen where he's like a little be beclemmed or befuddled he's like Mur. and it's kind of like yeah because guess what these are galactic beings and what are you going to say about that um, so this is the real deal what's going on and as soon as people start to wake up to all of this and you know, less of this baloneyism, like there's such a cacophony right now. It's it's discerning. And, and I think they're doing this chaotic discerning to shake people up because I think they're getting ready for um, more disclosure. But the thing of it is, is that um, the human species, we're not ready. We're not ready because we're still too savage. We're still too, especially in the United States, of course, because we've got all this... <sighs> fluoride and programming and we're just we're very hostile on in this nation as compared to other cultures it's terrible but um seriously not many other um entities want to deal with us except for the powers that be right now because they're not exactly cool i know I'm going off but anyway so which would be in rome and london if you know what i mean for those that understand So, <laughs> um, have you come to an understanding of how it all fits together? How all the uh, there's all these different levels. You got the aliens; they're physical. Mm -hmm. We're physical, but nothing is really physical. It's all frequency. Mm, and, no, these know, guys were physically in my room. I know, but I yeah. mean, <laughs> yeah. even even if you include the physical. As you stated previously, it's all about frequency. Everything is frequency. Right. Uh, and, you know, everything shape shifts. And, but my, the question is, uh, with, you know, you have some be, uh, beings coming in and feeding off the louche. They obviously are negative beings. I assume you're talking about uh, negative aliens or something of that nature? Right. Well, I mean, negative as far as 
we're concerned. Right. Um, however, um, we uh, milk goats and cows. We, you know, we're a pariah. Humans, oh, I mean, seriously, go talk to nature about how humans are. We're right. pariah. We're as bad as the, whatever these aliens are. So you can't sit there and judge them for what they do. But but we are, we are the, you know, they use us as much as we use others. So I can't sit there and judge them for that. Now, there are entities that are uh, benevolent. However, their frequency, um, and also I should just say, when I've met different aliens in the physical form, the room has a different vibration going on. So it says to me that they can't physically interact with us without creating this frequency or vibration, which is such as um, Jacques Cousteau needed an air tank to go into the water, right? So he had to set up his environment so that he could exist when he's swimming with the fish. So I think these aliens have to have some kind of whatever it is so that they can interact with us. So it's not as if that they're going to get a job and they're going to be working at UPS or Starbucks because they can't hold the frequency of this dense vibrational planet that we're on. And I'm just going to say, and I'm going to reiterate this, we are dense. <laughs> it's hilarious, but we are dense. And we are very tribal and we are very... Um, Man, I mean, you know, like just watch Star Trek. I mean, like, you know, all the judgment about how, uh, you know, we lash out, we're quick to anger, all those kinds of things. The human race needs to um, needs to grow up. Now, that being said, that is the natural trajectory of this planet. However, the powers that be and what we just experienced in the last couple of years I'm not so um, sure that um, there might be some chaos things, you know, a little bit of Loki going on where they might not want to control us a little bit more. I think maybe maybe people are waking up too much, so they want to they want to shut us down again. So a lot of people are saying a lot of things about the next year and a half. I've been hearing all kinds of conspiracy theories for so many years, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I don't believe any of them. Just so you know, people, I don't believe in all that crap, okay? I'm not that person. Yes, the world is round. Uh, I don't believe in stupid, you know, whatever geometric things going on in the field. I think there's a lot of whatever. So I'm not that person. The natural trajectory would be that this would evolve over a millennia, like, you know, hundreds and thousands of years. But I feel like these, there's some pranksters um, that want to jerk us around and use it because for their own entertainment. And um, so I'm not quite sure. Um, but I'm, again, I'm going to say, if you see any of these things happen to any listeners that you have, do we fight against it? We have to stay in kindness and love and heart-centered because that is our best defense. They can't touch us. They can't touch us because we have the vibrational, um, the vibration of love, um, and that's the divine spark. And, and that is creation, and they can't have it, and they can't touch it, and that's what keeps us separate. So while we're still evolving, I don't know how this is going to play out, but these are the things that people need to know because um, they just want to keep us in fear. And um, that's how they can exploit us. So you believe the aliens run planet Earth, yes? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Did you read the Bible? Did you read, um, I, I mean, the Hindu texts? I mean, every actual religion speaks about it. They 100% do. And even, you know, if you go into um, Constantine and Helena, Constantine saw a vision. Constantine, for those of you that might not know, he is like the supporter of the Christian faith, which is the Orthodox faith. And he saw a vision in the sky during one of his um, 
battles, one of his epic battles. And then he was the one that was like, oh, okay, these Christians, blah, 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 and stuff like that. And the virgin birth and Ezekiel and this and Moses and Jesus and all that kind of stuff. I'm like, and, and then the Hindus, Brahman and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, we can get into other religions and stuff like that, but it's all right there. Let's go into the artwork. Let's go into like all the pyramids. Hey, did you know there's pyramids in Wisconsin? No, nobody even knows about Asta Land in Wisconsin. It's a regional park. Nobody, like, it's all benighted. Everybody's just like, asleep, asleep. Nobody thinks about it. It's just, whew. Did you know about all the pyramids in Wisconsin? Mm, no. Yeah, well, look it up. There's a bunch of them in, in different lakes. And Asta Land, Wikipedia, that one. Asta Land National Park pyramids in wisconsin and then you got the My mayan prophecy and the aztecs about oh corn came from the north oh okay the, you know and also they had pyramids the pyramids in um what is it not the bat not the bad lights but um da, 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 the grand canyon that whole thing so there's a lot of things that are going on and just very much like um uh what's his face indiana jones the government takes it, controls it, hides it, locks it away. I mean, Rome has done that. I mean, you know, the Pope and, um, you know, yeah, they, 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 they take the information, they take the truth, and they hide it because we're more controllable. You know, just recently on Facebook, people were like, oh, yoga's evil or something like that, which is hilarious. And it just popped up its ugly head again. But the thing that where that comes from was back when Britannia uh, infiltrated India, we had all these yogis. And th these were people that were centered in their truth. Um, they meditated. They were connected to the heavens. And here come these, the British Empire. And they're like, screw you. What do we care? I'm like, we're connected to God. Who are you with your guns? And so that's why in that time they were like, oh, yoga is evil you know blah, blah 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 and so that's where all that all comes from but see because somebody who's sovereign you can't control them and we are sovereign we are whole holy humans but if you tell somebody you know all these christians like oh i'll pray for margaret but like don't let her don't let these people know that their prayer actually works thought word and deed because oh my god we can't control them then we can't control need to control them. And we're all happy sitting in our little gerbil cages, right? But if we all knew that we were part of the divine spark, that we are whole, holy humans, wow, that's an uprising. So is there any other area that you think we should discuss that we haven't discussed? Oh, uh, no. I mean, we could go on for hours and hours and hours. But I mean, um, I just really... Um, just 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 so you know and the people you know that might watch this just know that i i have rejected my own story i've rejected who and how i am i've rejected everything you know i um i don't want to believe in any of this kind of stuff blah 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 but i've had to come to realize that um this is true um these things have happened they've been witnessed on tv they've been witnessed you know with a lot of people um uh, you know, I, and I, I just feel like I'm, I'm here, another voice, um, and maybe some, some people that are watching this have had some of their own experiences. Don't feel that you're um, a weirdo, um, because as we all come out, you know, it's like um, the Wizard of Oz. You know, come out, come out, wherever you are. The more that we come out, and the more that we connect. And the more that we stay in kindness and the more that we're whole, holy humans, um, that's how we win this war because that's not what they want, you know? So try to eat as clean as you can. Um, be mindful of your mind, um, uh, be heart filled, um, skip, hop, jump, blow bubbles. Re you know, remember your creativity, remember your child likeness, all these things. Um, that's our best weapon, you know, and I, I know there's a lot of stories in the world that are about that people incarcerated or whatever, but they, they went into themselves and they, they 
they kept their divine love, their divine spark inside of them. And and that is the true nature of who you are. And that's who we are. And they're trying to take that away from us. So, and I, I for one, I'm not going to let them win. So is this, there, yeah, go ahead. Is there any story that you haven't told about the aliens or about the paranormal or anything that uh, you th that comes to mind that you'd like to go over before we end this? Um, no, I mean, you know, um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I have, I have a bunch of stories. I just, um, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the interactions that I've had with heaven or angels or ghosts and all that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, for a while I was a death doula and I just want to say that, you know, for a lot of people, um, please know, uh, we are energy and energy can't be destroyed. We are part of the divine spark. This is just a shell. Um, we are immortal beings. We are Isbees, immortal soul beings. And that's a whole thing that aliens get into, immortal Isbees, if you know what I'm talking about. We are all immortal souls. And this is just a shell that I'm in, in, incorporating corporally for this moment. Um, and... It, it doesn't really mean who and how I am as a soul. It's just a shell right now. It's just like, oh, this is a microphone or this is a glass and it happens to contain water. Um, so don't um, just remember you always will be your individual self, even though we are part of the collective. I don't know how to explain that, but we are immortal souls and um, don't don't worry about passing through this world. This world is about teaching and learning. Um, but this world is also very favored by the rest of um, the galaxy and the cosmos. They know how important it is. So even on your worst day, um, be grateful for your life because this is a teaching realm that the rest of the cosmos wants to come and be a part of because this is where um, the rubber hits the road. Um, this is where the divine spark, this is where God comes to learn because, you know, it's kind of like if you had all the money in the world, you know, aren't you bored? What are you going to do with it? Well, just imagine being God, you know, just floating around and nothing solid to do you get bored after a while, you know? So <clears throat> that is what this is all about. It's um, God experiencing God, you know? And so there's, there's a lot of teaching uh, in, in that concept, if that makes any sense. But I mean, seriously, in my book, I, I go on a lot about it. Um, and like I said, um, I'm pragmatic. I would like to pretend like, I would like to pretend like none of it's real. Unfortunately, it's all true. And um, my blessing is that I've had a lot of witnesses that are here to say, yes, Dana, we saw it. Yes, Dana, it's true. And yes, it happened. And you're okay. <laughs> you know, you're not delusional. You didn't make it up. We all saw that, you know, and I'm like, thank you. So um, I just feel like as long as we're joining our, all of our voices together, what can they say after a while? They can't sit there and gaslight us anymore because we are we are here to all speak the truth. And the more of us that come out and, and speak up, the better. And then they can't control us. And like I said earlier, now, do I want the, you know, I, do I want full disclosure? No, I, I, I literally I don't because once you take um, Mr. Bubble out of the, you know, bottle and pour it into the bath, you can't put it back in. And I'm really kind of happy with how things are. But let me just say this, I am also not um, being eaten by a reptile. So <laughs> I'm in a happy place. And um, so I can't speak for everybody, because I'm sure there are a lot of people that say would say um, disclosure needs to happen right now. So that's where I come from. <laughs> So do you think the greys and the reptilians and the whoever, do you think they have soul like we do or they don't? That's my understanding is that they are immortal souls. Um, however, um, what I've been told, not quite sure. So, you know, I go in and out of like, what's real? What's, you know, I don't know. I discern things from my own uh, experiences. I've been told that many of the gray aliens are simply uh, drones or droids 
that they are because I've seen a lot of other entities that might be like a tin can. People have said, oh, there's tin can, you know, these strange entities that walk around. So I do feel that there is a projection of soul um, that they can use like a droid. Um, so I think a lot of things that we might interact with or see that we mistake or take as having a soul is just simply a vessel um, for them to travel with. So I do believe like a lot of, I would say that some gray aliens could be just a, you know, like this is a mouse, like plastic, but it's being controlled by a soul that is billions of years old. And I'm going to tell you, your soul's billions of years, all of us. We, we all came from this one Brahmin's divine spark dream and then when this brahman is done dreaming there will be another dream by another brahman and for those of you that understand that you will understand so is there any final message you'd like to give the audience uh, that you haven't given them already like you know um uh, your website or just oh, a particular yeah. message yeah thank you um so uh, i'm i'm a boomer i'm i'm not all that polished uh i've been making youtubes uh last summer i had a nervous breakdown trying to make these youtubes because my kids are like oh you have to make youtubes because i'm like how are people gonna see my book i'm like and now i'm on TikTok, and all of them are shutting me down you know i, I use a hashtag and it doesn't work you know like so then I, my kids are like well then you know you're doing it mom because if they're shutting you down and closing you off then you know you're speaking truth and they don't want you to know i'm like okay so anyway so i'm trying my best so don't judge me <laughs> but uh so i have a website danalouise.com uh i'm getting out there doing events and doing speak uh, speaking um, um, around and uh, doing a bunch of podcasts. So go to DanaLouise.com. My book is on Amazon. Um, it also is on Barnes and Noble, barely because they're super shutting me down. Amazon messed with my book too, but we won't get into that. And then I have a YouTube, which is also much of everything that I have, like on Twitter or X, which, you know, whatever. And uh, TikTok is, this is going to sound weird. So it's just kind of like, that's my book. This is going to sound weird. So it's gonna, G-O-N-N-A, and we're flipped around. I'm sorry, I should do a mirror image thing. But anyway, so this is going to sound weird. Um, And in it, I... You know, I speak about myself, but then I wasn't going to put any of these energy lessons into it. But I gave the last year of my writing, I said to spirit, I said a prayer. I'm like, OK, um, what do you want in the book? Because my neighbor's like, oh, your book's very vanilla because <laughs> I wasn't going to put the reptiles and speak my truth, really. Um, and then. I was told I had to do all that. So I'm like, oh God, here we go. Uh, anyway, so I do at the end of the book have uh, a lot of energy lessons, which are for everybody to help you be a whole, holy human. And I hope, especially Christians who don't think their prayers actually work, just know thought, word, and deed. Come on, as Jesus did it, he said, you could do it too. Come on, where are you? Come on, join the party. Let's go. Um, so I have some basic energy exercises and a couple of them will um, spin your world and um, that's my whole thing and a lot of people other um, podcasts uh, have had me come back on they're like oh yeah I tried one of those with my son and like they're like whoa I'm like yeah yeah because you need you know it's working with frequency and I teach people how to work with the frequency and once you understand that you are a divine creator create creator and they help you to become a whole holy human as if you are an actual Christian or a religious person. I'm helping you to be that person, okay? Because they're trying to shut you down and tell you that you can't do these things. Because if the, sa the satanic people, the demonic people are doing it, we need to be able to stand up in our full light. And I'm trying to t help people and teach people how to do that. And it's just a couple of exercises and thoughts and things like that. Um you know, but I mean, like, because I was told, like, if this is your one chance to talk to the human race in your book, you have to actually teach. And so this is it. Um, I don't know. And maybe at some point I'll, 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 I'll give more, but this is just a, this is just a beginning for people, um, 
to, to understand who and how they are. And um, you are a divine spark. You are a co-creator with God. You are a whole holy human. And so that is, that is why I'm here. And that, that's what I'm trying to do and bring because I, you know, I, I'm a warrior and I'm here to fight. I'm here to help. I'm here to bring the troops um, for humanity, if that makes any sense. <laughs> it sounds really weird. <laughs> you mentioned earlier that you had some onboard experiences that you remembered, but you haven't, you haven't gone through any of those. Can you relate uh, maybe one that's longer or more memorable than any onboard experience you've had? Being on the ships, you mean? Y yeah. Yeah, because, uh, you know, when I saw, like, you know, I've seen uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind a million times. And then during this last year that I talked about when I prayed um, and I saw it again, I was like, oh, my God, the Bay Door. Because a lot of times that uh, when I was on the spaceships up, um, so literally I am the eyes on the ground and I will watch a lot of the things that would go on between the white hats and the other realms and I would be on the ground. But many times I would be on the ships and a lot of times I would be on at the bay door. So I'd be able to look down on the planet at, you know, over the land and watching what was going on, knowing that they were bringing up humans, what they were doing. Now, could I see uh, other entities and what I was dealing with? No, because their frequency uh, is too quick. Uh, and I physically, when you're physical, sometimes you can't see the quick frequency of these other entities and stuff. Um, it was very triggering for me, not too recently. Uh, on Netflix, they have this movie call or show called Three Body Problem. That was triggering for me because I forgot, um, you know, like I said, I've been on the waterships. Um, and I saw on that show the background of one ship as it was going through the Panama Canal. I'm like, what's going on in the Panama Canal? I didn't know at the time on the one ship that that was the Panama Canal, but the show was showing it. And I was like, okay, I don't know what's going on over there. But yeah, so usually on the water ships, um, a lot of times it's dignitaries, dignitaries that are coming in from other planets and such and just so you know this whole tart tartarian thing this other realm that people talk about is very very real you know and people like wikipedia and whatever people are shut down on facebook for talking about tartarian and stuff like that um it's very real it really happened but what happened was they shut it down on this planet and they took it off planet so there's a legitimate stable wormhole that um takes us to this uh, super connected uh, other earth planet. Um, our dignitaries go back and forth from there and they come, you know, back and whatever. And so um, during the time of the China balloon thing, that was kind of like this false flag because the news also talked about, oh, we're going to start to have these Zeppelins up in the air, but don't worry about it. That's all for, um, satellite technology and I'm like that's a bunch of bullshit and I knew in that moment I'm like that is um the off-world Tartarian planet and then that is them and how they can that is tourism so they come and tour this planet they come through the wormhole and other dignitaries come on and off it's all the trilateral all the ABCs and all this kind of stuff and that's the real things that are going on and um yeah, and all this negative things that you see on TV, such as um, Olympic events or entertainment events, music events, and all these kinds of things. Just please know this is real. This is going on. Um, you know, people, the adrenochrome, children are the key to this planet. That's what they use. Um, they use the children for also, um, you know, like watch that movie Ender's Game. That's who they use for interplanetary um, galactic wars and stuff like that. And that's why I think at that time when I became eight years old or so, that's why I was taken into that program. Um, so that's the super space program. Was I off-worlded? I know this is going to sound really weird. Was I off-worlded to Mars for 20 years and came back? I'm not sure. Probably because um, 
like my dad, uh, we used to have a lot of black ops people come and drink beer in our backyard. And, uh, you know, here I am, this little blonde girl, and these black op people would um, tell me their horror stories. Why would you do that unless you knew this person as a 30-year-old or 40-year-old or you already knew them? So um, I don't know. I can't tell you about it, but I'm very suspicious because in my 3D world, I experience a lot of black ops people finding me and telling me things. So I'm very suspicious of that. So that's a whole nother thing. And everybody's like, oh, you're going to have this other book. And I'm... Um, yeah, I'm finding I might because all this even weirder stuff is happening now to me. So I don't know. Stay tuned. <laughs> oh, well, it's been a pleasure uh, speaking with you. I hope you uh, were able to say everything you wanted to say. Well, thanks. I just, um, you know, I know shows usually have a time frame and stuff. And um, yeah, you know, I can talk about other things at another time or something. It's just a lot to digest because I say a lot of things. And some of the things that I say are like this level. And a lot of people might be at this level. And I feel like I feel very exposed um, because I'm at this level. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I can't speak to this level yet. So that might happen at some point in time. So, um, you know, if we reconnect or you have me back on, I can talk about some of those other things or if something start to happen on the planet. I might know something about it. Um, yeah, I'm just kind of being hush hush and tiptoeing, tiptoeing <laughs> as I come out of the cosmic closet, like I say. But um, just so everybody knows, if you had some weird experiences, I don't care if it's ghosts or angels or this kind of stuff, you're not crazy. Nope, you're not crazy. Um, you know, um, just have faith. Just have faith. And, um, and, and you're, you're going to be just fine, you know. Thank you for coming on this show, uh, Dana. Let me uh, go ahead and stop the recording. Thank you.